that's nice. What's up guys, it's Rev J. It's the middle of winter, so I haven't had much going on with the 66C10, and you've seen me put up a couple of videos of the Yukon, but largely, it's been pretty quiet. So I decided it was time I pick up another small project to mess around with during this winter to kind of fill the gaps. Now this one's gonna get done as it gets done, and you can see the skeleton of it behind me here. This is a Mongoose Dolomite. Now it's probably the cheapest fat tire bike I think you can find anywhere. Uh, most of the entry level fat tire bikes are $500 and up and that's kind of on the low end. This thing though, I think it was available at Walmart stores uh, starting about two or so years ago, maybe three years ago. And it started at about, I think, $225. Now, my buddy Zach bought this one about a year to a year and a half ago. Well, he was really happy with it, except that we use salt on our roads, which means that all of the steel components and any of the untreated metals, well, they suffered the casualties pretty heavily. Now, if you've been watching my channel a while, you're very rightfully asking yourself, what are you going to do with a bicycle? Rev J, you don't do bikes. And no, I don't. I don't really do motorcycles either. Though I have in the past, I've built a handful. I don't really ride motorcycles much anymore. I don't really do anything on two wheels. So that's why we're going to make it into something with three. Now, for those of you that don't know what a drift trike is, uh, allow me to show you. Ton of different configurations on the type of motor you can use uh, and the type of bike chassis you can start with. Some people do something as simple as a little 16 inch kids BMX or mountain bike all the way up to the 20 and 24 inch varieties. In our case I think we've probably got the beefiest donor I can think of especially for the price of hey man take this uh, with this mongoose dolomite chassis. Now how much of it we're going to use exactly remains to be seen.
All right, guys, I threw the rest of the stuff out in the metal recycling pile for now. We can always go grab it again if we need it. But let's take a look at the good stuff we did go ahead and get off this thing today. To start with, we've got all of the uh, hardware and bearings that were in that uh, sort of headstock head tube piece there. We've got the upper and lower bearing, the retaining collars, as well as looks like some spacers and the bolt that holds it into place. That, of course, was originally all in and around here. You can see the lower collar is still on the top of the uh, forks there. Of course, we're keeping the whole fork assembly because uh, it's designed for a wheel of this size. We've got two wheels, the front and the rear, 26 by four tires. And they're in pretty good shape. They do have tubes, uh, but of course those can always be replaced. There's a decent amount left on these. It's got a decently knobby tire. Uh, and for what we're going to end up doing with it, well, we'll see if that's going to work out or not. Spokes and everything are in pretty good shape. Here's the rear wheel there. You can see the... Um the axle and everything, it's got like a grease shield on the side, which was where the derailleur and everything used to be. We could probably pull that off. The uh, rear rotor, front rotor, front brake. Uh, this one sitting back here is the rear brake, which I just took off and set aside once I got it all uh, disconnected from the frame and everything. Um, these aren't amazing brakes, but uh, hopefully they'll work to get started with. Uh, what I did find out, which was very cool, uh, is that these here, the rotors and everything, and the style uh, Shimano brake that it uses, is something that can be upgraded and replaced. So you could even go hydraulic or with a fancier brake setup. For now, we'll start with these, but it's nice to know that the bolt pattern and everything is fairly standard. As a matter of fact, pretty much the whole bike comes apart with just a five millimeter Allen wrench, which I think is pretty awesome. Uh, we, of course, kept the uh, sort of riser here with the clip-on bar setup. A lot of this we'll use unless we have to end up replacing it, but I think it is a pretty darn solid start for what we're going to go ahead and do. But we took a look at the Mongoose to start with here. Decent fat tire foundation. And it's going to be a big, crazy front tire for this thing. Uh, and thanks to a lot of the online resources I found that did have more information on this thing, there is actually a pretty good amount of information online. I'll put some links in the description here and show you guys on screen about where I found the information about the frame and the brake sizes and the interchange, because all that stuff was pretty valuable in some decision making here going forward. Uh, we've got it all torn down, showed you guys what we saved off of it. Next time I think we're going to come back, I've got a Photoshop started of a mock-up of what I want the frame design to look like. Some of the parts we're gonna use, we can talk about that kind of stuff going forward. Have any of you guys built something like this before? I know a lot of people have built drift trikes. I've seen a couple people in my timeline on Instagram have them. As a matter of fact, I'll have the social media here on screen. Check me out on that. Uh, and let me know what you guys think. Do you have any suggestions on the design going forward? It's a crazy big front wheel. We're gonna need a decent kind of frame to go behind it. I've got a couple rear axle setups that I'm looking at. I think it's from OMI Warehouse or a couple other drift trike suppliers. Things like, are we going to go with pegs? Are we going to go with highway pegs or highway bars for my feet? Do I want to go foot throttle, hand throttle? What kind of motor? All those decisions have to be made going forward, and I'd love your feedback. Uh, if you guys have any suggestions or anything like that, put it in the uh, comments below. Also, sources for parts. I've seen some good ones, uh, but if you have anything I don't know about, maybe carting suppliers, uh, locally in Wisconsin would be great, but of course online is always common and totally acceptable. I'm rambling, guys. I think that's a good stopping point for now. As always, thanks for watching. There will be more coming up on the Hatred Copter C10 going into this season. Uh, more on the Yukon, more on my buddy Dan's car, Midnight TA. Check out his channel. Uh, but for now, we've got the drift trike to mess around with. So I will see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you next time.